Today I'd like to talk about linear independence, and in particular, what does it mean for a set of vectors to be linearly independent? Um, so this is actually a related concept to span, which we talked about in the previous lecture. But uh, it's a little bit different, and to be honest, I think this is actually a tricky concept the first time you learn it. Um, in particular, the uh, definition of linear independence seems a little bit strange at first. So I'd like to try to motivate that a little bit. Um, so let's just look at an example. Um, so consider the vectors give you three vectors. So v1 will be say 1, 0, v2 will be 0, 1, and v3 will be well, let's say 2, negative 1. Okay, um, what space are we in by the way? Well, we're in R2. Because our vectors have two components. Um, okay. So if I gave you these vectors, what would you say the span of these three vectors is? So what is the span of v1, v2, and v3? What are all linear combinations I can obtain by taking, um, by starting with these three vectors? Well, the answer is uh, all of R2. And in fact, you might have noticed that we could have just taken v1 and v2. These two vectors alone are enough to give us all of R2. Right, we saw this in the previous lecture. To get a, b, the vector a, b, you just take a of this vector and b of this vector. Okay, so a is your scalar here, b is your scalar there. Um, so I, I, I want to make note of that. So, so in fact, we didn't have to take all three of them. We could have just taken the first two. It's just a span of v1 and v2. Turns out to be r2. So in some sense, this v3 didn't really add anything new to what we already had, okay, in terms of linear combinations at least. So there's some redundancy here, okay? Um, and that's sort of what linear independence is measuring. So, so actually, linear independence um, is um, essentially what it's saying is you have no redundancy. Okay, so this set is not linearly independent. We would actually say it's linearly dependent. Um, so I'm going to define that in a second. But this is, the, this is the idea. Of course, this is not a mathematical definition here. Uh, but this is how to think about linear independence. Okay, You're, you don't have any redundancies. Um, okay, so before I give you the definition, I, I actually just want to note something about these vectors. V3 is actually in the span of V1 and V2. Okay. So V3 we can write as, well, it's 2 times V1, right, plus uh, negative 1 times V2. Okay. And I'm going to write this uh, equation, this vector equation that I just wrote down in a slightly different way. I'm going to move everything over to one side. So I have 2 times 1, 0, minus you know, 1 times 0, 1. And I have minus, you know, another 1 times, there's like a 1 times there, uh, 2 minus 1. And what does that equal? Well, it doesn't equal the number 0, but it equals uh, the vector 0. I'm going to move this one over to that side. Okay. Um, this suggests the following definition. So here's the definition of, I'm actually going to define linear dependence first. And um, then I'll, I'll define linearly independent. Um, so a set of vectors. Uh, v1, v2, dot, dot, dot. Say so we have m vectors in Rn. Okay, there's no reason why that has to be the same number as the dimension. Um, so a set of vectors is called, 
Uh, so let's start with linearly dependent. Okay. It's called linearly dependent if, well, if I can write an expression like this. So if I can find scalars um, so that I can uh, create a linear combination of my vectors equaling the zero vector. So if there exist scalars, C1, these are real numbers, right? Up to Cm, these are just real numbers, right? Um, okay, not all zero. So I'm excluding the case where they're all zero. That's really important. I'm going to underline that. Um, such that Well, I want to be able to write an expression of this form. C1 times the first vector plus C2 times the second vector, all the way up to you know, Cm times the mth vector equals the zero vector. Okay. Great. So what can we say about this set here? This set is linearly dependent. Here's a proof right here. Um, what does linearly independent means, uh, mean? Well, well, it just means uh, the opposite of this. So uh, it's linearly independent if uh, there do not exist uh, these scalars, not all zero, so that we can do this. Um, let me phrase it a slightly different way. So a set of vectors is called linearly independent if the only solution to this equation, C1 V1 plus C2 V2 um, if the only solution to this equation is, so there's always going to be one solution. That's why I had to emphasize not all zero. We could have just taken all these C's to be zero, right? And then we just get the zero vector on this side, and of course that equals the zero vector. Um, but they're linearly independent if that's the only one. So if the if the only solution is the, you know, I'll call it the trivial solution, which is just set all of the set all of the scalars equal to zero. C1 equals C2 equals Cm, and they're all just a number zero. Okay. Um Okay, let's do some examples. Okay, so uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 2, negative 1 are, well, I already said it, but they're linearly dependent, right? Um, what if I just took the first two vectors? Okay. These are, here's my first example. Um, these uh, actually turn out to be linearly independent. And that's because, well, what if I tried to do this? So I tried to write some combination of 0, 1, and 1, 0. So let's say C1 times this one plus C2 times this one equaling zero zero well what's the only way i can do this right notice that in this uh in this top entry here i'm going to have a c1 times one right plus plus c2 times zero which is zero and that needs to equal zero somehow which means c1 has to be zero right so i have to get rid of this one here so this actually implies c1 and c2 are both zero similar argument for c2 Okay, so these two are linearly independent. It's sort of no redundancy in some set, in some sense. Um, here's another example. I'll, I'll phrase this as a question, maybe. Is a set of one vector, what if I only had one vector? What will we call that? Uh, is a set of one vector uh, linearly independent? Okay. 
what would that look like? So say I had C times the vector equaling the zero vector. Is it true that the only solution to this is C equals zero? Well, sure, right? So like if V was something like one, zero, negative four, I need to get a zero vector. Well, then of course I need uh, my constant to be zero. So, so yes, the answer is yes. The only way I can get a zero vector is by multiplying by zero. However, there's one exception. What if my vector were the zero vector itself? Well, then I can actually choose any coefficient here. Right? I don't have to choose zero anymore. Um, and I'll still get a zero vector. So I should say, yes, it's true that a set of one vector is linearly independent um, as long as uh, V you know, is not the zero vector. Okay. Um, speaking of the zero vector, um, what can we say about that? So it's another example. Here's what we can say. Actually, any set of vectors, no matter how many vectors we have, um, any set of vectors containing the zero vector is linearly dependent. Okay meaning we can find some non-trivial linear combination equaling zero. So not, we can find uh, some expression where not all of the coefficients equal zero. Um, and, and maybe we can see what that is. So like, let's suppose our set of vectors is, you know, zero and then V2, V3. I don't really care what these vectors are. They can be anything. Can we find a non-trivial linear combination of these equaling zero? Well, sure, here's how you do it. I'll take one of the zero vector and then I'll take zero of everything else. Okay. And that, sure enough, equals zero. So one times the zero vector is still the zero vector. Okay, so there's a proof right there. So, so the zero vector um, just automatically makes a set of vectors linearly dependent, okay? So that's actually maybe if you're trying to figure out if a set of vectors is linearly independent or dependent, maybe that's the first thing to look for. Does a set contain a zero vector? If so, linearly dependent. Um, okay. Uh, and a set of one vector, as long as that vector is not the zero vector, is linearly independent. What about a set of two vectors? So let's go there next. Um, okay. Um, All right, so what can we say about two vectors? So for two vectors, for sets of two vectors, um, there's actually a really nice characterization of linear dependence or linear independence. Let's, let's phrase it in terms of dependence. So V1 and V2 are dependent, uh, linearly dependent. If I accidentally say dependent instead of linearly de dependent, uh, I mean linearly dependent. Um, so v1 and v2 are linearly independent, uh, sorry, linearly dependent, okay, is actually the same thing as, is equivalent to, one being a scalar multiple of the other. Okay. Um, so for example, one, zero, two and two, zero, four. We can just uh, stare at that and immediately see that this is a scalar multiple of this one. Well, similarly, this one's a scalar multiple of that one, but uh, we, we only need one of them to be a scalar multiple of the other, and then, um, then we can immediately say they're linearly dependent. Um, and if they're not scalar multiples of each other, so if that was a three instead, then they would be linearly independent. So this is just an immediate way to tell. 
two vectors are linearly dependent. You can see it right away. For three or more vectors, it's, it's more complicated. Um, why is this? So let's say I have my two vectors, and I have some, um, some linear combination equaling 0. Right? And let's say that uh, these are dependent, right? That's what we're assuming. So one of these coefficients is guaranteed not to be zero, right? I'm guaranteed to be able to find some way to write um, to write a linear combination equaling the zero vector, I should say, with not both of my coefficients being zero. Uh, so you know, suppose that C1 is not zero. So if C1 is not zero, well then, what can I do? You see, what I can do is I can actually express uh, one vector as a linear combination of the other. Because I can just move this to the other side. So I get C1 V1 equals minus C2 V2. Right? So ve vector arithmetic here. Um, but then I can divide by this scalar. So V1 is um, minus C2 over C1 times V2. There we go. I just expressed V1 as a scalar multiple of V2. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we just showed that, you know, if we have two linearly independent vector, or sorry, dependent vectors, one has to be a scalar multiple of the other. Um, what if we just are given two vectors and we know that one is a scalar multiple of the other? So now I'm trying to show that this statement actually implies that statement. Okay, so what if we know that, for example, V1 is k times v2 well then can we can we show that actually v1 and v2 have to be linearly dependent well sure it's the same idea um, let me move both of these over to the same side and you see how now i have a linear combination of v1 and v2 where um, not both of my coefficients are zero okay not both of my scalars are zero so v1 and v2 are, are linearly de dependent. So these are actually equivalent. Um, okay, and so for three vectors, three or more vectors, this gets more complicated. There's not an easy way to stare at three vectors and say, you know, ah, these have to be linearly independent. Um, so, you know, is there some nice characterization maybe of, uh, you know, when are three or more vectors? or any number of vectors, um, linearly independent or dependent, let's say. And there, there is. Um, so let me, let me call this a theorem, actually. Um, so, um, so let's say vectors um, v1, v2, all the way up to Vm, say there are an Rn, doesn't really matter. Um, these are linearly dependent. That turns out to be the same thing as saying, this is really cool, um, it's the same thing as saying um, one of the vectors, at least one, but it can definitely find one, so one of the vectors is in the span of the others. Okay. Um, and again, it's the same, uh, it's sort of the same argument that we just did above. Um, so let's suppose that these are linearly in, uh, dependent. So assume, we're assuming this, we're gonna to try to show that actually that means one has to be in the span of the others, okay? Just using our definition of linear dependence here. Um, so we're gonna assume the vi are uh, dependent. What does that mean? Then um, there's some expression like this, C1 V1 plus C2 V2 plus, uh, what do we go up to, Cm Vm equals zero. 
and at least one of the CIs, so one of the coefficients, is non-zero. And let's just suppose it's C1, just for the sake of argument. If it's not, if it's C4 or something, then we'll just relabel that to be C1, okay? So suppose it's C1. And this is what you do. Then we'll move everything else to the other side. So I have a minus C2 V2 plus all the way up to minus CM VM. And then I can actually express V1 as the following linear combination. So I'll divide by C1. It's just a scalar, so I can divide by it. You can't really divide vectors by vectors, right? But you can, you can uh, divide by scalars. That's fine. And um, this is what I get all over C1. Cool. So we just uh, wrote V1, actually, as a linear combination of the others, meaning it's in the span. Um, okay, let's do the, let's do it the other way around. So what if we have, we, we really want to prove that these are equivalent statements. So what if we have, um, so instead, suppose one of the vectors is in the span of the others. So suppose we can actually write V1 as some combination of the others. So let's say C2 V2 plus C3 V3 up to CM VM. What are we trying to show? We want to show that they're linearly de uh, dependent, um, but that that's um, that's not too bad because we can just move everything over to one side. What do we end up with on this side? Just a zero vector. And notice that we just wrote zero as a linear combination of these vectors. We have to be sure that we can do it so that not all of these coefficients are zero, right? Not all zero. Uh, but look at this one here, right? <laughs> that's, uh, that's not zero. So these, we just proved that uh, these vectors are linearly dependent, okay? So this is a really nice way to think about um, span. It has a nice GM, or not span, sorry, linear dependence or linear independence. All right, linear independence would mean that one of the vectors is not in the span of the others. Okay. Um, you don't have any duplicates in, in some sense. Um, um, right, so there's a really nice geometric interpretation here, which is here's what linear dependence really looks like. So you have two vectors and they span a plane. Okay. They don't have to span a plane. They could be on the same line. Let's say our vectors span a plane. Okay. Um, let's say I want to add a third vector. What if I add this vector here, lying in the same plane? Okay. That would be, this is a picture of linear dependence. Okay. What does linear independence look like? Okay, so again, I have my plane. I have two vectors lying in this plane. Linear independence would be no one vector is in the span of other vectors. Okay, so, so maybe this would be linear independence. A vector lying off the plane like that. independence. Um, okay. I should give a word of warning here, though. So, um, so here's just a caution. Um, I'm going to give you four vectors. Um, one, zero, zero. Let's do zero, one, zero. So we're in R3 in this example. 
2 minus 1, 0, and then 3, 0, 1. Okay. So these are linearly dependent. Why are they linearly dependent? Well, we can start seeing it more easily now because we have this equivalence. So can we see that one of the vectors is in a span of, of the others? Sure, yeah, so, so this is, let's call it V1, V2, V3, V4. See, the, the first three vectors is just the example I did earlier. I just added an extra uh, term here. So, so V3 we can write as two times the first vector minus the second vector. And, you know, if I want, I can take, I'll just take zero of the fourth vector, right? Okay. I can write this one as a combination of the others. So they're linearly dependent. But V4, actually, it turns out, cannot be written as a combination of these three. Okay, so th this is important. One of the vectors, at, uh, and it's at least one. Right, but that's what I mean by one. At least one of the vectors is in the span of the others. That doesn't mean that any vector that I pick will be in the span of the others. Right here, V4 is not in the span of V1, V2, and V3. What's the easiest way to see that? Well, see how I have this one in the third component? But there's no way I can get a linear combination of these three uh, give, to give me a one in that third component, right? Because the third components are zero um, in, in these three. Okay, so these are linearly dependent. And yes, that means I can definitely find one of the vectors that's in the span of the others. But that doesn't mean that any vector I pick will be in the span of the, the others. Okay, so that's, that's something to be careful about. There are a lot of subtleties um, in, uh, related to this concept of linear independence. Okay, so this is one of them. Um, and, you know, let me, let me just draw a quick picture of this. So um, this is what the picture would be like. V1, V2, and V3. Those are lying in the same plane. Maybe. Okay, so this is some plane in three-dimensional space. And then what, where would V4 be? V4 is actually not lying in that plane. You cannot get to V4 by taking linear combinations of these three. Okay. Um, okay. Great. So this is a really useful characterization of linear dependence um, or independence. Independence would mean the opposite. You cannot, none of the vectors is in the span of the others. Um, okay. So how do you actually determine whether vectors are linearly dependent or independent in practice. That's what I'd like to talk about next. So determining whether vectors are, uh, let's say, linearly independent. Okay, and um, it turns out often the easiest way to, uh, to do this is just by using uh, the definition. Okay. Um, the one possible exception is if we have two vectors, well, you can often just stare at them and say, okay, this one is a, is a multiple of this one, in which case they would be dependent, right? And if one of them is not a multiple of the other, then they would be linearly independent. Okay, so, um, but if there's three or four vectors, uh, it gets much more complicated. Um, but you can actually just use a definition uh, to do it. Uh, let's do an example. So R, the vectors, um, we'll give you three vectors, three components each. So 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, and 2, 1, 0. Are these linearly independent? Um, i.e., uh, what does that actually mean? Does there exist, um, or sorry, uh, 
um, does, let, let's write a linear combination of these vectors. I'm going to do this as a matrix. Right, so we'll use this matrix notation. But remember, when I, when I write a matrix like this, really all it is is it's saying, is ex it's expressing uh, a linear combination of the columns. Okay, so is there some linear combination um, of the columns? Uh, so I should write C1, C2, C3 here. Maybe I'll call them X1, X2, X3. Um, okay, so, so let's say I have a linear combination of the columns of these vectors equaling the zero vector. And what would it mean for these vectors to be linearly independent? What would it mean for this to have only the trivial solution? What do we mean by trivial solution? Um, everything's zero, right? So does this only have the, the solution x, x1 equals zero, x2 equals zero, x3 equals zero? Okay, that's a, that's a direct translation of the definition of linear independence. Okay, so can I take, you know, you know, if I take, you know, some linear combination of these columns and I get the zero vector, does that only have the trivial solution? Um, and so, so you can see what, what's going to happen here. This is a system of equations problem, right? This is going to be a Gaussian elimination because we can write down the augmented matrix. It's one, zero, two, uh, zero, negative one, 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 zero, and then one minus one, zero, zero. Okay. Notice this is a homogeneous system, right? It's homogeneous because of that. This this right side is all zeros. What do we know about homogeneous systems? Well, they always have this solution, right? They always have uh, at least a all zero solution. Um, let's see if there are any others. How do we see if there are any others? Well, we uh, do Gaussian elimination. So let's add the first row to the second. Let's uh, subtract the first row from the third. Uh, this is minus two, I guess. Notice this right side always just stays zeros because it's homogeneous. Um, we have pivot, pivot. Uh, let's get rid of this minus one. How do we do that? We'll uh, add the second row. This becomes a one. Okay, and that is um, our row echelon form. It's not reduced row echelon form, but that's okay. You can see almost everything uh, you want just from the row echelon form. We have three pivots. Um, so the first thing is we. this is consistent. How do we know it's consistent? Well, there's no row with all zeros and then something non-zero here. In fact, we could have even figured that out from the beginning, right? Because it's homogeneous. So homogeneous systems are always consistent. Um, and there's something else. Uh, are there any free variables? Well, no, there's a pivot in every column, right? So, and there are no free variables. There are no free variables because there's a pivot in every column. And what does that mean? It means that we have a unique solution. There are no free variables. So there's a unique solution. And this is a solution, right? We can even see that here, right? X3 equals zero, X2 plus three X3 equals zero, but X3 is zero, so X2 equals zero, and X1 equals zero. Uh, so the vectors are linearly independent or linearly dependent? What should I write? Linearly independent. There's only the trivial linear combination that will allow me to get zero, okay? Um, okay, let's uh, do one where it ends up being dependent. So let's actually do the same problem. What about, um, first two vectors will be exactly the same. 
And then this the, this third vector, instead of 2, 1, 0, it'll be 2, 1, negative 1. I'll circle that to <laughs> notice the difference here. Uh, okay. Well, if we write down our augmented matrix, we have a negative 1 there now. And uh, when you do the, when you do the uh, row reducing, Gaussian elimination, uh, you end up with this zero 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 in the last column in the last row. Okay. You should verify this, but you end up with this matrix instead. We have a pivot. We have a pivot. We do not have a pivot here in this last row. Okay. Is this consistent, first of all? That's usually the first question I like to ask. Is it consistent even? Are, like, can we even talk about solutions? Yes, it's consistent. Why? Because we don't have any rows that are all zero and then a non-zero element here. Right? That's because it's homogeneous. Still homogeneous uh, system that we're trying to solve. Um, so it's consistent, but there are free variables. which imply how many solutions? Infinitely many. Infinitely many solutions. Okay. So the vectors are linearly dependent this time. Okay. Um, and there's something cool that we can do, actually. We can, we, we can even show that we can get a linear combination of these equaling zero. Okay. So like X, X3 is free. Let's just call it, let's just call it one. But I'll just note, it's actually a free choice for X3. And then X2, what does this say? It says X2 plus 3X3 equals zero. So X2 is minus three. And then what does the first line say? It says x1 plus 2x3, x3 is 1, um, equals 0. So x1 equals negative 2. OK, so here's my linear combination. I can take my first vector and multiply it by x1. And I can take my second vector and multiply it by x2. And I can take my third vector and multiply it by x3. And you can check that you indeed get the 0, 0, 0 vector when you add these up. So not only does this uh, Gaussian elimination allow you to determine whether vectors are linearly in independent or dependent, but if they're dependent, it actually allows you to find this uh, dependence relation. It, it allows you to find a linear combination, a non-trivial linear combination, of the vectors equaling zero. For example, we can move these two to the other side and then show that this vector is in the span of the other two. Um, so that's really cool. So, um, so what I'd like to do next is actually formalize uh, this. So first of all, what is what are we really looking at here? Okay, what are we really looking at to see if uh, to see if the uh, vectors are linearly independent or dependent. We're looking for free variables, right? That's the key. If there are free variables, then the vectors that you started with, so if there are free variables to this homogeneous system, right, then the vectors that we started with must be linearly dependent. Otherwise, they have to be linearly independent. And free variables have to do with columns without pivots, right? So we have a really nice characterization now um, for um, you know, what does it mean for a set of any number of vectors to be linearly independent? How can we tell? Right? Um, let's call this a theorem. This will be similar to the one we did for span. 
at the end of the span lecture. So let's let um, u1 up to uh, um be vectors in Rn. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and define what I mean by this matrix A. The columns are just my vectors. So I just take the vectors to be the columns of this matrix. Um, then the following statements are equivalent. Okay, so so the main idea of this theorem is how can you see linear independence from a matrix? Like how how can you see it from the the row reduced form of a matrix or just the row echelon form it doesn't have to be reduced um, okay so our first statement is just going to be well the vectors are linearly um, independent okay but what is this statement equivalent to that's what we're going to that's what we're going to say so these are linearly independent what does that mean well, that means, let's just get practice writing this out um, as many ways we can. Well, it means that this equation plus dot 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 xm um equaling zero has only the trivial solution, right? x1 equals x2 equals xm equals zero. Uh, sorry, not a zero vector. These are my scalars, right? Okay, so this has only the trivial solution. Um, three. Just gonna write two in a different way. I'm not saying anything so far. I'm just writing this in a different way. But you wanna get used to all these ways of writing it. Okay, so this equation, this matrix vector equation, now I have the all zeros vector. This vector is the same size as these columns, by the way, right? So it should have n, n elements. Okay, so this has a unique solution. Why is having a unique solution the same as having only the solution 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Well, because this is a homogeneous linear system that this uh, matrix equation describes. We know for sure it has the zero solution, right? And so by saying unique solution, we're saying it has only the zero solution. And again, yeah, this is like A times, you can write it like this, A times vector X equals vector zero, okay? That's the shorthand. So AX equals zero has a unique solution. That's what it means to be linearly independent. And this is the most interesting one. The row echelon form of A, the matrix A, what can we say about it? It has a pivot in, what should I say? There are no free variables. That's what we want to say. So it has a pivot in every column. every column, okay? Um, let's get practice using this. So here's a question that we can solve, uh, which looks like a pretty general question at first, but it's uh, um, we can solve it with this theorem. So let's say uh, we have more vectors than we do. Uh, so, so let's say the number of vectors is larger than uh, the dimension of the space. So the question is, can m vectors not span Rn? We're talking linear independence now. So can m vectors in Rn be linearly independent? For example, can three vectors in R2 be linearly independent. 
In this first problem, first one we did in the lecture, we saw that three vectors in R2, these three at least, were not linearly independent. They were linearly dependent. And it turns out that uh, yeah, you, you cannot have three vectors in R2 be linearly independent, no matter how you choose them. So the answer is no, actually, in general. But how on earth would you, would you prove something like that? Well, uh, by using this theorem. Vectors being linearly independent is actually equivalent to the row echelon form of this matrix having a pivot in every column. What is this matrix going to look like in our example if we just put the vectors in as the columns? Um, let me actually move it down a little bit. Um, well, it's going to—it's going to be a matrix like this. It's going to be wider than it is tall. So, um, that's because our vectors have n elements, right? But we have m of them. We have m vectors. Okay, and m is bigger than n. Can a matrix like this have a pivot in every column? That's the question. Um, well, if we have a pivot in every column, it has to look like this. Uh, has to really be a staircase, like this. Okay, that's the only way it can have a pivot in every column. But we have more columns than rows, so look what we have here. We're always going to end up with free variables. Okay. Okay, so we cannot have a pivot in every column if the matrix is wider than it is tall. That's the proof, right? So, so, so the answer is no, we cannot have m linearly independent vectors in Rn. So for example, if we're working in R3 and I give you four vectors and I ask you if they're linearly independent, you can immediately just say no because you cannot have four linearly independent vectors in R3. Okay, by this argument. Okay, so I have a little bit more to say on linear independence, but I'll do that in the following lecture.